After our brutal winter coming out, we saw snow mold, we saw some winter injury, we saw some ice injury. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, it's an opportune time to consider some overseeding or some reseeding in those areas that have been damaged by that brutal winter that we had and all the problems that were associated with that winter. So what we want to do today is show you the steps. Whether it's a large area or a small area, we're going to give you the optimal methods to make sure that that seeding that you do is successful going into the summer. Depending upon the extent of the damage, you can be very aggressive in large areas or less so on small areas. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about what you would do in those smaller damaged areas. One of the first things you need to do is remove the debris of that dead or soon to be dead turf. So you can use a rake and lightly rake the area, get as much of the debris off there as possible. If you're using a stiff tined rake, you can also use that to create small little holes or perforations to receive that seed. Then in those smaller areas, you don't have to use a special seed or anything. Simply you can spread the seed by hand, distributing it as evenly as possible. You want to get about oh, 08 to 10 seeds per square foot to make sure that that seed takes. And then you're going to go back over that area and rake that seed in to get really good seed to soil contact. So once again, what are we going to do? We're going to prep the area. We're going to get the soil bare as much as physically possible. We're going to get the seed distributed. And in this case, we're going to simply do it by hand. And then we're going to rake it again to make sure that that seed comes in intimate contact with the soil to be ready to germinate and reestablish that damaged area of the lawn. When reseeding large areas, one of the most research proven ways to do this is with the use of coreification. Many of you know what corification is, sometimes referred to as plugging, but simply a hollow tine connected to a machine is pushed into the soil. It physically removes that soil and brings it to the surface, creating the perfect hole for reception of that seed. The seed falls into that hole. It may germinate down in the bottom of the hole or even catch on the sides of the hole. But the, perf the, the reason this is such a good way to do it is that that seed then germinates and it may be two, three, four inches long before you are mowing that turf. Obviously the turf around here is in pretty good shape and it's going to need to be mowed long before that seedling is ready to be mowed. But by giving in that protection of that, that core hole makes it a perfect environment for that seed to come up and then not see the mower until it's got a good active root system on it. Now let's review what we've talked about. First, we had a brutal winter that created a lot of opportunity for reseeding. Spring is one of the opportune times to do that reseeding operation. If you've got small damaged areas, you can use some fairly non-invasive hand raking and hand seeding to correct the problem. But on larger areas, you may want to consider running a core air fire or a plugger over that area. Research shows that three or four times is optimal for creating the number of holes that you need. And finally, by quality seed. By quality seed, whether it's turf type tall fescue or Kentucky bluegrass, we want you to buy certified seed, which is obvious by the blue tag on the bag. Blue tag imp indicates that that seed is genetically pure and relatively free of weed seeds. So that's a simple stepwise progression on how you want to reseed these damaged areas.